On May 25th, 2019, AEW presented its first ever event, Double or Nothing, from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. In all, nine matches were broadcast, including a colourful cast of old familiars and rising stars to a curious audience. Many of those individuals have gone on to stabilise the foundation of a strong wrestling organisation, while others have continued their careers elsewhere. Let's take a look at what those competing men and women brought to the the first AEW dance in 2019 and examine their places in the industry today. Mason Ryan, Stevie Ray, Earthquake, Alundra Blaze, Norman Smiley, Zach Gowan, Bam Bam Bigelow, Ahmed Johnson, Tory Wilson, Buff, Bagwell, Robert Gibson, Dave Taylor, Terry Taylor, and Godfather's Homes. Dwayne Gill, Adam Bomb, Michael Hayes, Corvon, S.A. Rios, Jim Manai, the manager from Kai and Tai, Jim Powers, Francine, Jack Swagger, Mean Gene, Fatchick Thriller, Duke the Dumpster, Oklahoma Manta! What happened to that wrestler? Someone main eventing, which leaves me lamenting. What happened to that wrestler? Some since long forgotten, but their memories live on. Michael Nakazawa. AEW's first ever match was a bizarre, somewhat cluster-effish 21-man casino battle royale featuring an assortment of comedy moments, including some from baby oil aficionado Nakazawa. It was a sound strategy as the application of oil allowed Nakazawa to escape from all sorts of compromising moves and holds. Unfortunately for the decorated DDT pro wrestling star, he had the displeasure of being the first man eliminated from that battle royale. Today, Nakazawa remains remains on screen as an assistant to longtime friend Kenny Omega and as a backstage staffer with several roles including writing Japanese subtitles for AEW broadcasts on New Japan Pro Wrestling World. Sunny Days a rotund brawler that stands out on the merit of his yellow and black face paint scheme, Days had been a regular on the Georgia independent scene for several years and was given a spot in the first ever AEW bout. Days did score the first elimination by throwing Nakazawa out, but wasn't long for the match himself, getting eliminated by former WCW star Glacier. To date, Sunny Days has only wrestled one other time for AEW, losing to Tony Nese on a 2022 Elevation broadcast under the name Steel City Brawler. Days remains a fixture on Georgia Indie Cards. Glacier. Speaking of Mr. Blood Runs Cold, Pro Wrestling's answer to Sub-Zero popped up in the Casino Battle Royale as something of a bridge between eras for Ted Turner Network Wrestling. Glacier did get some fun spots like freezing sunny days with Mist and kicking MJF's ass for daring to taunt him with the Karate Kid crane pose. The fun was short-lived, however, as MJF sent the WCW alumnus to the floor. While still occasionally wrestling today in his late 50s, Ray Lloyd has also helped to train several individuals, including Brock Anderson, Anna Jay, and even Cody Rhodes himself. Brian Pillman Jr. The next generation of wrestling star was on full display at Double or Nothing as the son of the loose cannon made an appearance in the midst of his MLW run with fellow Hart-related generational stars Teddy Hart and Davey Boy Smith Jr. Though there was a bit of buzz surrounding the mulleted offspring of Flying Brian, the younger Pillman didn't really stand out in the match and was eliminated by private party. Pillman wouldn't become an AEW regular until 2020, and he remains with the company today as one half of the Varsity Blondes alongside Griff Garrison. Private Party Both Isaiah Cassidy and Mark Quinn showed off their wares in the Casino Battle Royale after impressing on the Northeastern independent scene with their boundless athletics. A little over one month later, Cassidy and Quinn's dynamic performance in a three-way tag match at Fighter Fest earned the pair a full-time deal with AEW, making Private Party part Part of the first wave of young indie talent to earn a featured spot within the company. In the three plus years since, Private Party's usage in AEW has been a bit mixed as they've beaten the Young Bucks and feuded with the Hardy Boys, but there have also been occasional lulls that don't do their talents justice. 
Marco Stunt The undersized, resilient Marco Stunt took to the air in the Casino Battle Royale when he was pounced and thrown from the ring by the much larger Ace Romero, who sent his 115-pound opponent crashing into the clutches of Private Party on the floor. Stunt had previously caught notice in places like Game Changer Wrestling and MLW, and signed on to AEW to be a part of the Jurassic Express trio with Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus as the team's scrappy sidekick. By the latter part of 2021, Stunt was phased out of the group and departed AEW in 2022. Today, Stunt still wrestles for GCW, among other indies. Ace Romero Speaking of Romero, the super heavyweight had been making a name for himself on the indies for his surprising amount of athleticism, particularly when he vaults across the ring to pounce some poor fellow to their doom. Romero never wrestled for AEW after Double or Nothing and instead joined up with Impact Wrestling later in 2019. After two years as a featured regular, with Impact, during which time he dropped a reported £100, Romero departed in the autumn of 2021 and continues to work indies, including for international promotions like WXW and OTT. Sean Spears The former Ty Dillinger signed with AEW just days before the Battle Royale and seemed apt to continue his embrace of the number 10. However, Spears later revealed a malevolent streak, bloodying Cody Rhodes with a chair to the head and falling under the tutelage of the dire Diabolical Tully Blanchard. In many ways, Spears has been one of AEW's most underappreciated talents, a consummate pro that elevates the people he works with while demonstrating a sneaky, very subtle sense of humor. AEW's resident chairman had been absent during MJF's hiatus, but he remains a trainer alongside Tyler Breeze and is expecting his first child along with wife Cassie, the former Peyton Royce. Dustin Thomas after losing both his legs below the knee at age 3 due to a spinal issue, Thomas went on to forge an unlikely career as a pro wrestler, not letting his predicament keep him from taking to the ring. Thomas's inclusion in the Casino Battle Royale drew a few headlines, and he even got to perform his variation of the 619 on Joey Janela during the course of the match. As was the case with several individuals in this match, this marked Thomas's only AEW appearance to date, and he's competed for several indies since, with GCW being among the more prominent. Billy Gunn One of the most decorated tag team wrestlers of all time signed on to AEW as a coach, though few would have guessed he would one day find new life as one half of the Scissor Me Daddy Ass connection with Anthony Bowens of The Acclaimed. Until then, Gunn was a curiosity for AEW, an aging Attitude Era star who remains in incredible shape given he'd reached his mid-50s, looking like a buff Martin Cove. Today, Gunn remains quite prominent in AEW as both a backstage mentor and as an on-screen personality, having guided both sons Austin and Colton and later the acclaimed. Brandon Cutler the man who provides us with weekly BTE goodness was quite emotional when he signed with AEW back in 2019, as it's not every day that an indie lifer signs with a national wrestling company. While that alone would be enough to get behind a hard-working guy like Cutler, he's found a more ideal role as a hapless lackey for the Young Bucks, dispensing cold spray and praying daily for his perpetually broken nose to heal. And that's where Cutler is now, backing up the top stars of the elite when they're not suspended, while filming an and editing BTE away from ringside. Joey Janela through stuntman antics and a reverent personality and a seeming willingness to try anything once, signing Janela felt like a no-brainer for a wrestling promotion that sought to exemplify a modern industrial flavor. True to form, Janela exited the Battle Royal in wince-inducing fashion at the hands of Luchasaurus and went on to leave his own mark on AEW, particularly in unsanctioned matches with both Jon Moxley and Kenny Omega. Over time, though, Janela faded from the AEW upper echelon and his contract expired in May of 2022. The bad boy remains a fixture with GCW and also works for DDT Pro, winning the promotion's extreme title. Sunny Kiss A future partner of Janela's, Kiss survived deep into the Battle Royal before getting eliminated by Tommy Dreamer. Kiss remained with AEW going forward but wasn't often featured on the primary shows, instead wrestling on the program Dark during AEW's first year. A storyline union with Janela was teased in vignettes but wasn't featured all that much on TV before Janela turned on Kiss in August of 2021. 
Despite the lack of prominent use, KISS remains with AEW and recently joined the Trustbusters faction headed up by Ari Davari. Orange Cassidy Orange Cassidy's AEW tenure began the way that you would expect, showing up fashionably late for his debut match on account of terminal lethargy. After cultivating his slothiness on the independent scene for some time, Cassidy found a large audience in AEW's fanbase for both his effortless, literally effortless, comedy and his ability to shine in competitive matches. If anything, the man known as Freshly Squeezed is proof positive that there are benefits to thinking way outside the box. Three years later, the Orange Cassidy character remains popular in AEW for fans of all ages and Cassidy finds consistent use up and down the card. Thumbs marginally up. Tommy Dreamer The innovator of violence was another recognisable star brought in to represent the older guard of professional wrestling, providing a foundational contrast for the new wave to work with. Indeed, Dreamer helped anchor the match late, dispensing trash can lid shots and taking some butt butts from Sonny Kiss. Dreamer's participation was a one-off, as he was working with Impact Wrestling at the time as a producer and part-time wrestler. As of 2022, Dreamer remains part of Impact Wrestling in a backstage role, works occasionally matches for numerous indies and also contributes to Busted Open Radio. Jungle Boy just three and a half years into his career, 21-year-old Jack Perry arrived on the AEW scene with telegenetic genes, instincts beyond his years, and a clear potential for greatness. Though Jungle Boy didn't win the Casino Battle Royale, he did manage to eliminate the much larger Ace Romero and survived deep into the fray. In short order, Jungle Boy would become one of AEW's best young prospects, playing the role of a resourceful and valiant underdog in tag team and singles bouts alike. Today, Jungle Boy is a former AEW World Tag Team Champion and has shown plenty of edge in a rivalry with the treacherous ex-mentor Christian Cage. Jimmy Havoc the melancholy deathmatch veteran had spilled blood and shredded skin on several continents and brought a grim resume with him to AEW. It didn't take long for Havoc to, well, wreak havoc in the Battle Royal, particularly when he stapled a cigarette to the forehead of Janela. Over the year ahead, Havoc occasionally demonstrated some of his sadistic tendencies, but found himself on the outs of AEW and the industry as a whole following accusations during the Speaking Out movement. Havoc left AEW in 2020 after a attending rehab, retired from wrestling, and was last known to be working as a courier. Luchasaurus Not since the prime of Cain had there been a masked hoss with considerable athletic ability roaming a major promotion. Luchasaurus racked up four eliminations en route to a bronze medal finish in the Casino Battle Royale, but more importantly stood out on the account of his unique look and persona. A subsequent partnership with Jungle Boy gave professional wrestling the perfect contrasting tag team as Luchasaurus is an ideal get the hot tag and clean house component. After reigning as champions for five months with JB, however, Luchasaurus turned on his longtime partner in 2022 and has fallen under the spell of that dastardly Christian Cage. MJF It didn't take long for MJF to realise his potential as AEW's resident A number one douche nozzle. After nearly cheating his way to a battle royal win, MJF went on to disrupt a speech from special guest Bret Hart later in the night, quickly showing a large audience his transcendent deafness on the mic. By year's end, MJF was screwing Cody Rhodes out of a world title, assuring his place as the lead villain on any show he's cast. Today, MJF is still one of AEW's premier stars, having returned from a well-worked, much-publicized hiatus during the summer of 2022. Adam Page Hangman was originally set to face Pac at Double or Nothing before a scheduling conflict presented the bastard from appearing. Page instead won the Casino Battle Royale as the Joker entry, last eliminating MJF to earn a spot in the match to determine the first ever AEW World Champion. That, of course, was the first chapter of a two-year story with many trials and tribulations, finally culminating with Hangman winning the gold from Kenny Omega in grand fashion. Though Page has since dropped the title, the anxious millennial Cowboy remains one of AEW's most popular and gifted stars. Kip Sabian We already covered Dreamer, now let's do the other man in the box. Sabian has the distinction of winning the first ever singles match in AEW history, defeating Sammy Guevara in the other match at Double or Nothing's buy-in. From there, Sabian's run was pretty innocuous until he joined up with eventual wife Penelope Ford, forming a villainous combo heavy on super badness. 
An injury to Sabian in 2021 shelved him for a while, so he bided his time by walking around AEW crowds with a box on his head. Sabian finally unboxed in the summer of 2022 and plays a disjointed individual centered around the box gimmick. Sammy Guevara There are two kinds of people in this world, those that like seeing Guevara get run over by vehicles and those that just shrug when it happens. Sabian may have won this match, but Guevara, seen here with a panda head on his noggin, went on to become a bigger player in AEW following his recruitment into the inner circle as Chris Jericho's grinning deputy. A lukewarm baby face run and a maligned relationship with Ty Mello have Guevara positioned once more in his natural role of stunt boy heel with three TNT title reigns to his credit. SCU Not every city can be as majestic and resplendent as Los Angeles, something that Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian and Scorpio Sky will happily remind you about. SoCal Uncensored scored the first ever pay-per-view win in AEW history, which marked the high point of SCU's time as a trio in the company. Kazarian and Scorpio went on to become the first ever AEW World Tag Team Champions, while Sky did reign twice as TNT Champion. Since SCU split in 2021, Daniels has been head of AEW talent relations while occasionally wrestling. Kazarian, meanwhile, splits time between AEW and numerous indies, while Sky was heavily featured in the Men of the Year and Dan Lambert's American Top Team before dropping the TNT title to Wardlow. Strong Hearts as part of a cross-promotional effort with Oriental Wrestling Entertainment, AEW brought in OWE talents Shima, T-Hawk and L. Linderman to compete against SCU in the pay-per-view opener of Double or Nothing. Since the loss, the three Strong Hearts members have appeared in other AEW bouts over the course of the next year, the most high-profile being Shima's matches with Christopher Daniels and Kenny Omega during the summer of 2019. Shima also teamed with T-Hawk in a number one contender's tag team battle royal in February of 2020. Today, Strong Hearts remain in full effect, particularly in the promotion Great, where El Linderman presently reigns as G-Rex champion. The faction also appeared for both New Japan and All Japan during the course of 2022. Awesome Kong a surprise debut at Double or Nothing, Kong's presence turned a three-way women's match into a four-way after being introduced by Brandy Rhodes. Though Kong seemed ideal as a veteran to help anchor the AEW women's division, she only wrestled sporadically for the promotion going forward, having her last match on New Year's Day 2020. Kong then went off to film for the Netflix series Glow and never returned, parting ways with AEW in 2021. Later that year, Kong announced her retirement at NWA in power and was inducted into Impact's Hall of Fame that October. Kylie Ray Smiley Kylie was one of the first women's acquisitions made by AEW, and she looked for all the world to be a fixture in the division. However, her participation in the four-way at Double or Nothing ended up being her only match for AEW, as she pulled out of a match at that June's Fighter Fest and subsequently asked for her release. Kylie Ray later indicated that the split was amicable and that she needed time to work on her mental health. Ray has since wrestled for Impact and NWA and presently works for indies in the Midwest. Nyla Rose No one twitters better than Nyla Rose, and few have been more consistent in AEW's women's division. Though her first big break on the national scene, Rose looked like a formidable opponent for Kong in the days ahead, though nothing came of that potential rivalry. Rose fell short in the match to determine the first AEW women's champion, but later defeated Riho to become the title's second champion. Since dropping the belt, Later in 2020, Rose has been employed as a roadblock character for Ascendant babyfaces to test their might against, while getting teamed somewhat regularly these days with Marina Shafir. Dr. Britt Baker Though Baker won the four-way match, the good doctor hadn't exactly hit the ground running with AEW crowds. The generic babyface veneer had to give way sooner or later, and when it did, Baker struck pay dirt. As a self-important role model with maxed-out sarcasm, Baker became the star of the AEW Women's Division, and her winning of the Women's World title in May of 2021 had been long overdue. Baker reigned as champion for 10 months and is still an integral part of the women's scene, presently entering into
into a feud with her long-standing henchwoman Jamie Hayter. The Hybrid 2 Given a choice, would you rather be able to walk on your hands like Jack Evans or shimmy and strut as smoothly as Angelico does to his theme music? The TH2 duo proved to be masters of motion in AEW, even if they didn't get too many chances higher up on the card to show off their skills. Evans and Angelico ended up as flunkies in the Hardy family office, but Evans wouldn't be long for AEW, departing the organization in the spring of 2022. Angelico remains with AEW, usually teaming with fellow former HFO mercenaries The Butcher and The Blade. Best Friends Together or apart, Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta have always deserved a shot at the big time in the US and had never really gotten it, Trent's understated WWE run aside, of course. For three plus years, Chucky e. T and Trent have been among the most consistent talents on the AEW roster and have proven to be awfully hard to root against. Their partnership with Orange Cassidy has produced more than a few feel-good moments and as has the inclusion of Trent's well-meaning mother, Sue. Gold still eludes best friends in AEW, but at least they get to rock some snazzy tie-dye tracksuits for the time being. Aja Kong Trivia time! What three individuals competed at both the 1995 Survivor Series and at the 2019 Double or Nothing? Start the timer. The answer is Billy Gunn, Dustin Rhodes, and Aja Kong. The always imposing Kong brought some welcome veteran presence to a six-person Joshi bout, teaming with Emi Sakura and Yuka Sakazaki. Since the match, Kong has wrestled twice more for AEW as part of the Women's World Title Eliminator Tournament in 2021, where she succumbed to Ryo Mizunami in the quarter-final round. Now in her early 50s, Kong still takes up a busy schedule, wrestling for promotions like Zero One and OZ Academy. Emi Sakura Introduced to AEW fans in her Freddie Mercury tribute attire, Sakura made several more appearances for AEW as the year went on, including falling short against Riho in a match for Riho's AEW Women's World title at full gear. Since then, Sakura has had a few on-again, off-again runs with AEW, trading in her Mercury gear for Queen attire of a different sort. Since August of 2021, Sakura has wrestled pretty consistently with AEW on its secondary programs, while occasionally returning to her native Japan to compete in Gato Move Pro Wrestling. Yuka Sakazaki The Magical Girl has a sizable cult following in professional wrestling, and it's little wonder that AEW has occasionally brought her in for excursionary appearances. Sakazaki wrestled for AEW a few more times before the pandemic took hold of the world, but did compete in the aforementioned Eliminator Tournament in early 2021, losing in the Japan Final to Ryo Mizunami. Primarily, Sakazaki wrestles for Tokyo Joshi Pro Wrestling, where she won the Tokyo Princess Cup in 2022. Ryo Mizunami A pro since 2004, Mizunami combines natural charisma and presence with hard-hitting offense, a blend that contrasts well with the talents of her various opponents. Mizunami only made the initial appearance for AEW in the six-woman tag, but turned back up in early 2021, winning the Eliminator Tournament for a shot at the women's world title then held by Hikari. Shida. Since then, Mizunami spent time with AEW in a pair of several month stretches, last competing for the company at the end of 2021. Back home in Japan, Mizunami continues to wrestle for promotions like Sendai Girls and OZ Academy, often in the championship picture. Riho Though hardly the most physically imposing wrestler, Riho's strength relies in her guile and her resourcefulness, outlasting larger opponents through wits and sheer determination. AEW was high enough on Riho to crown her their first ever women's champion in 2019, and she would go on to reign with the gold for four months. In early 2022, she fell short in her bid to reclaim the women's title, losing to Britt Baker at the first ever Battle of the Belts. As of this writing, Riho last performed in AEW in May of 2022 during the weekend of Double or Nothing in Las Vegas. Hikaru Shida Of the six women involved in the match, it's Shida that has benefited most in AEW over the long haul. In May of 2020, Shida dethroned Nyla Rose to capture the AEW Women's World title and proceeded to hold the belt for a shade over one year. Along the way, Shida defeated the likes of Rose, Mizunami, Thunder Rosa, and Ty Conti before dropping the gold to Baker. Shida went on to have a lengthy feud with Serena Deeb and has since split her time between AEW and promotions in Japan. Dustin Rhodes 
The artist formerly known as Goldust was a bit of a wild card headed into Double or Nothing. At the age of 50 and coming off a long injury layoff, there was no guarantee Rhodes would deliver, even against brother Cody. To everyone's pleasant surprise, the Rhodes brothers pieced together an absolute gem, a blood-soaked, angst-filled war that is one of AEW's greatest all-time matches. Since then, Rhodes has continued to defy age, a consummate veteran that can hang with today's best wrestlers. In addition to wrestling for AEW, Dustin also trains prospects at the Rhodes Wrestling Academy in Leander, Texas. Cody Rhodes All the principles at AEW's launch seemingly had something to prove, perhaps none more so than the man pejoratively dubbed Three Star Cody. The younger Rhodes not only delivered a masterpiece with his brother, but continued making a deep impact during what turned out to be a headline-making, sometimes polarizing, three-year tenure with AEW. The former three-time and original TNT champion parted ways with the organization in February of 2022 and made his return to WWE at WrestleMania 38 about six weeks later. Rhodes had an acclaimed series of bouts with Seth Rollins, but is presently sidelined with a torn pectoral. The Lucha Brothers Over AEW's lifetime, some of the best outings on AEW broadcasts have come from the supremely talented Lucha Brothers. Between Phoenix's gravity-defying acrobatics and Penta's great physical charisma, and he's no slouch in the ring either, the Lucha Bros have had show-stealing tendencies as seen on day one at Double or Nothing against the Young Bucks. Phoenix has also shined in singles outings, particularly against Kenny Omega in 2021. Phoenix and Penta have since reigned as AEW World Tag Team Champions on one occasion and are also part of the second ever Trios Tag Team Champions alongside Death Triangle Tag Team partner Pac. The Young Bucks Matt and Nick Jackson can throw a hell of a superkick party with any guests, but the best chindigs are with Penta and Phoenix, as evidenced by the classic battle the two teams had at Double or Nothing over the AAA World Tag Team titles. Over the years that followed, the Bucks have been versatile, playing plucky babyfaces or self-absorbed heels with equal aplomb and holding up their half of some truly nutty battles. The Bucks have reigned twice as AEW World Tag Champs and recently, with Omega, won the tournament to crown the first ever trios tag team champions but they're they're currently suspended kenny omega aew's mission statement was heavy on emphasizing strong bouts so who better to hire than the best bout machine omega headlined double or nothing against chris jericho in what turned out to be a very good match though perhaps a few degrees off omega's insane standard before long, though, Omega started racking up matches high on Asterix accumulation, proving throughout 2019, 2020, and 2021 why he's in a very exclusive class of wrestler. In December 2020, Omega captured the AEW World Heavyweight title and proceeded to hold the belt for three weeks shy of one year. And as mentioned, he also teamed with the Bucks to win the trio's title, a reign that was subsequently wiped out. He's also currently suspended. Chris Jericho Few available wrestlers were more qualified to be the initial face of AEW than Jericho, one of pro wrestling's most versatile, inventive, and adaptable headline stars of all time. Though pushing 50, Jericho was understandably the MVP of early AEW, defeating Omega, becoming the first world champion, and firmly establishing himself as the archetypal villainous kingpin. Since then, Jericho has continued to find ways to reinvent himself at a stage in his career when he could easily coast on what he's already done. Le Champion today continues to elevate young stars and make magic with fellow vets as the leader of the self-indulgent Jericho Appreciation Society. John Moxley. He may not have wrestled at Double or Nothing, but the former Dean Ambrose was the talk of AEW coming out of their maiden card. The first major jump directly from WWE was the disgruntled Moxley, who attacked both Jericho and Omega in a wild scene at the end of the pay-per-view. If Jericho was AEW's early go-to star, Moxley has assumed that role himself for all of the 2020s thus far, winning the World Championship three times and imbuing AEW with a sturdy credibility along the way.